Welcome to Sharjah, a cozy, warm slice of paradise, tucked away in the heart of the UAE. Sharjah is a stunning backdrop for this final round of the UIM F1H2O World Championship, where the 2014 World Champion will be crowned. Sharjah is a unique city with happy people, removed from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the UAE. It's also a modern, rapidly developing sheikhdom with a character all its own. Long stretches of sandy beaches, historical sites, pristine deserts, and wildlife just minutes away. A world-class aquarium. Sharjah's got it all. Sharjah's always been a major regional trading port, and the local culture is deeply connected with the water and the sea. A connection that is highlighted by their annual water festival. A celebration of Sharjah's most important natural resource, the essence of this verdant, park-lined and cosmopolitan, family-friendly city. And when Sharjah celebrates, it celebrates in style. Spectacular style. This was a week-long celebration along Sharjah's dazzling, tower-lined corniche surrounding the Khalid Lagoon. Sharjah also celebrates its 15th year hosting the UIM F1H20 World Championship with the Sharjah Grand Prix marking the final and deciding round of the 2014 season. Now let's see what happened in the previous round. Round four, the Grand Prix of Abu Dhabi saw the immaculate Philip Schiap of China CTIC team, now completely in tune with his boat, nab his first ever pole position, starting the race from the best seat in the house. Beside him was Sean Torrente from Qatar team, with Torrente's teammate and three-time defending world champion Alex Carella starting back in fifth. Schiap was fast on the start, getting to that commitment boy ahead of the field and never looking back. He extended his lead in his new boat and despite a determined race-long chase from Torrente, Schiap opened his lead lap after lap. Former world champion Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team climbed from sixth to fourth position with a determined race, but he was unable to get past Ahmed Al Hamali of Team Abu Dhabi. The Emirati driver closing the race out in third behind Sean Torrente, with Philip Schiap nabbing his second ever Grand Prix win. <laughs> Schiap's win catapulted him to the top of the world standings, three points clear of Corella and six points clear of Torrente, with Celio in fourth, effectively out of the championship race, going into Sharjah. teams and 16 of the world's top F1H2O pilots competed in the Sharjah Grand Prix, but it was a three-horse race for the 2014 title. Philip Schiap was the man to beat. His new David Moore designed boat, the Moore Raptor, has proved superb in Doha and Abu Dhabi. He has an exceptional crew, a dedicated team behind him, and they are all hungry for that first ever world championship title for this 11-year veteran of the Tour. Uh, it's not easy. Everybody say, OK, Philippe, it's your day, and uh, the pressure come, but... Uh, 
uh, I think it's good pressure. I like and uh, I think uh, for my driving, uh, no change. And uh, I do my best. The pressure is also on for Qatar team's Alex Carrilla. The Italian world champion had a perfect start to the year in his quest to equal Guido Capellini's record of four consecutive world titles. But a costly mistake in Doha, followed by a fifth place finish in Abu Dhabi, has now put his 2014 campaign in jeopardy. Three points behind Schiap, he needed to outpace the Frenchman if he was to make history. Yeah, for sure it's a strange feeling because it's already the second straight year we are arriving in charge like this, it's not easy. Let's give it all and let's see who will be the champion Friday. Sean Torrente was six points behind Schiap and three behind Corella going into Sharjah. The man from Miami was last year's world runner-up to his teammate Corella and he wants to go one better this year. Well, it's really tight between me, Alex and uh, Philippe and when you get this close to something you've worked on for a really, really long time, um, of course it, it, you get anxious, you want to get it done, but um, while I want it bad, let's put it this way, I want it bad, let's just leave it at that, I want it real bad, but so do these guys and we're going to all work really hard and uh, like I told my guys before the weekend started, if we're, if we're excellent this weekend, if all of us are excellent, we'll be world champions. But there's a whole raft of former Sharjah Grand Prix champions that the top three have to contend with. Finland's two-time world champion Sami Selio wants to end the season on a high note. Al Hamali and Thani Al Kamzi of Team Abu Dhabi want to win another one for the UAE. And Francesco Cantando of Motoglass F1 team is always hungry for another victory. With a field like this, the battle was going to be intense. The Grand Prix of Sharjah will be raced on a five-pin course in the Khaled Lagoon, surrounded by the Corniche. It's considered to be one of the toughest circuits on the tour, with reflecting waves creating unpredictable conditions. Well, this course is, is really difficult for several reasons. Number one, when you come out of the turn, you have the sun directly in your view. The water sticks to the windshield, it's quite muddy, so your view is not very good. Then you have the really tough right-handers where you, you really have to set it deep, and then you have to come back and pick up a one-pin turn. This, I would consider to be the most challenging course of all the Formula One race courses. Qualifying was more crucial than ever. It's divided into three rounds with four boats knocked out in Q1 as the remaining 12 fight it out in Q2 for a place in Q3, where the top six get the course to themselves to set their fastest lap times in a bid for pole. In Q1, youngster Zhang Ziwei of China CTIC team beat veteran and former pole winner Moritz Stromoy of Team Nautica for a place in Q2 as well as another veteran, Duarte Benavente of F1 GC Atlantic team. Also out was Jesper Fors of Team Sweden, with Bartek Marsalek of Motoglass F1 team unable to compete due to steering problems. Q2 saw an intense battle unfold between a bevy of talented champions past and present. But in the end, former champs Cantando and Alcamzi couldn't make the cut. The outstanding Eric Stark of Team Nautica just missed out in seventh position, with F1 GC Atlantic's Yusuf Al Rabayan also out, along with Philip Roms of Mad Croc. Torrente set the fastest time in Q2, meaning he'd be the last man out in Q3. Just six boats left for Q3, Al Hamley was first out, but he had a lackluster couple of laps. Sammy Celio got a 46.56 on the board, but would it be enough? Team Sweden veteran Jonas Anderson always has something to say, and he said it. With a fantastic time of 45.55, a second faster than Celio. Next up was Alex Corella, the first of the three world title contenders. He knew just what was at stake, and as always, the Italian rose to the occasion, ripping up the circuit with a time of 45.12. It was a hefty target for Philip Schiap, who was next out on the water. Everyone knew Schiap was fast, everyone knew the Raptor was exceptional. 
but nobody could have guessed just how fast. 44.33, a ridiculously fast time. Philip Schiap had provisional pole. Could Torrente beat him? He went out gunning it as always. But he had problems and had to settle for fifth on the grid. Pole position once again went to Philip Schiap. Uh, it was really fast. Um, we had to fight real hard in, in, uh, in Q2 and then I don't know what happened in Q3. Um, off the corner it would just bog and, and want to shut down so I, I just didn't have anything to fight with. So um, it's definitely devastating. We, we felt like we had a really good setup and definitely be in the top three for sure and, and a chance to pull but that's racing, right? Yes, great day for me, for my team. And I'm very happy uh, my, uh, my team works a uh, lot of to, uh, this week and uh, in prepare the boat is perfect. The balance is perfect and uh, for tomorrow, of course, it's better to uh, start in front. The final qualifying results, great finish for Anderson starting third on the grid. Torrente has some work to do in fifth behind Celio with Al Hamily starting in sixth. Final race of the year, Shiap is so close to his first world title. Can he and his team do it? We hope for the engine, props, everything is perfect on the 37 lap and after I'm happy. Will Qatar team stop Shiap? Can Torrente claim the top prize? Or will Corella make it four world titles in a row? Today is a long race, but I know that uh, I missed the pole yesterday. Uh, we try so different solution for the race today. We will give our maximum out to the end, and uh, we will finish the race first. We'll be the champion. So. Carella starts in second. Anderson in third can prove to be a loose cannon. Torrente fifth. Al Hamily sixth. Stark 7th, Al Kamzi 8th, and Cantando down in 9th. The start, it's uh, quite narrow here in Sharjah, so it's a quite difficult start. And uh, if I can finish the, the first lap in a good position, then we have a good chance. We're going to push maximum this race. Drivers and crew wish each other good luck before the boats line up to unleash 10,000 horsepower and tear away to the commitment boy. Can Carilla make it four in a row? We'll see in 37 laps. It's on! Shiap has a great start, pulling away from Corella. Torrente getting squeezed out as Celio and Alhamily leave him in their wake. Stromoy is falling back with engine problems. Shiap is first to the boy. Corella right behind him. Then Anderson in third. Torrente fell back, but he's recovering and takes the inside lane. Alcomzi beats Stark to the first turn, the Swede faltering behind in the heavy spray. Torrente pushes up on Sammy Celio on the inside and gets into fourth position. Great move from the American. Alhamily chases Celio in sixth. Further back, Cantando also takes Eric Stark to move up to eighth. Shiap leads the pack around race boy number one of this five pin, 2.2 kilometer circuit. Chased down by Corella, Anderson, and an aggressive Torrente. Celio bumped down to fifth, giving chase to Torrente, who knows he has no room for error. Oh. Error 
her in this 37 lap race. Further down, Stark's woes continue as he's passed by Philip Roms with Aurobayan pushing on the Swede. Up in the lead, the man from Rouen, France, opens a hefty lead over Corella in his bid to become the first French F1 H2O champion in the 31 year history of the sport. Back in 10th, Stark passes Roms, but Roms gets in on the inside to reclaim ninth position from the Swede. Behind Schiap and Corella, Torrente is trying to find a way to get past Anderson, but the experienced Swede is holding the American off. Torrente knows that a win won't be enough if he's to win the world title. Schiap would have to come in third because of a six point difference. But that's looking like a tall order as Schiap extends his lead to over four seconds over Corella. The Frenchman is flying out there in his 92nd career Grand Prix. Schiap is starting to lap the back markers as he further widens his lead. And Corella is almost nowhere to be seen as he comes around boy number five, lapping F1 GC Atlantic driver Duarte Benevente of Portugal. Meanwhile, Torrente zeroing in on Anderson, trying to overtake the Swede as the two racers lock horns in a battle for third place. Torrente ducking and weaving in Anderson's spray, trying to find a way past him. The Swede fends off the man from Miami, but for how long? Philip Roms breaks down on the circuit. That'll be a yellow flag. Just the opportunity Corella and Torrente would have been hoping for as the field bunches up for the restart. Let's take another look at the start of the race. Schiap has a perfect start, leading the fleet to the commitment boy. Stromoy drops back immediately and is out. And there we see Torrente getting squeezed out by Celio and Al Hamili. Schiap first to the turn. Torrente cutting in on the inside, making up for lost ground and using it to his advantage to overhaul Celio. The boats await the green flag for the restart of the race. There it is, Corella right up there with Schiap, barely half a boat's length between them. This is the chance Corella was looking for, but can the Italian take advantage? Schiap has the speed to hold on to his lead, going into race boy five. Behind them, Torrente is going head to head with Anderson as he passes the Swede. Torrente moves up into number three with some incredible acceleration. Celio also leaves the Swede behind as Anderson drops back and Celio moves up to fourth. Lap 14, Torrente pushing up on his teammate Corella as the Qatar team drivers try and keep touch with Schiap, but the Frenchman is already seconds ahead yet again. Celio in fourth, Anderson foundering as he continues to drop back down the field while Al Hamily moves up to fifth and Cantando gives chase to Anderson followed by Eric Stark, Yusuf al Rubayan, Bartek Marsalek, Benavente, Force, and Zhang Ziwei. Thani al Kamzi motors off the circuit with a problem. It's race over for the former Sharjah Grand Prix champion. Cantando overtakes Anderson on the 500 meters straightaway to boy one, bumping the Swede down to eighth. At the back of the field, Bartek Marsalek of Poland pushes on Yusuf al Rubayan trying to overtake the Kuwaiti, but al Rubayan holds on, fending off the Motoglass F1 driver. But Marcelek persists in his dogged pursuit as he overhauls al Rubayan, and al Rubayan flips over. He's out of the race. It's another yellow flag as the Osprey rescue team come to al Rubayan's aid. The Kuwaiti was fine, but his season was over. There's the crash from al Rubayan's on board as the Kuwaiti goes for a swim. We are pushing in you know, over the 7th and 8th position and uh, as you know I start number 10 but this is, uh, this is not my season, see you in 2015. And that means it was another opportunity for the Qatari boats to try and get a jump on Shiap. Here's where the radio man is crucial as teams nervously await the green flag. There it is, the race is back on. Corella is right by Schiap's side. Schiap just managing to keep the pace up enough not to let Corella through on the outside. But Corella is not letting up. He knows he might not get another yellow. Oh. 
yellow flag opportunity. He wants to go all out for the world title here. But Shep once again too careful, too experienced and too fast to put his lead in danger. On the replay, Corella right up there with Shep pushing on the Frenchman knowing this could be his last chance. Ahmed Alhamali suddenly pulls off the course and Stark swerves just in time to avoid him, both missing the buoy. Stark manages to get back on course without losing ground, but Alhamali drops out and there are no UAE drivers left. Young Swede, Jesper Fors, chases Bartek Marsalek, eventually passing the Polish driver. Fors then also leaves Benevente in his wake as he moves up to seventh position. Great racing from the Team Sweden rookie. With just 13 laps to go, Schiap once again opened his lead over Corella, this time to nearly six seconds, as time was running out for the Qatar team drivers if they were going to try and stop the Schiap juggernaut. Corella has dominated the F1H2O Tour for the past three years, overshadowing Schiap, who finished third last year and second the year before. But can Schiap finally turn the tables on Corella? Francesco Cantando, who has won the most Grand Prix races on the Tour and a former champion here, going strong in fifth. Behind him, Eric Stark drops out of the race. That concludes a great first full season on the Tour for the young Swede. That moves young Jesper Fors, a former F4 driver, up into sixth position behind Cantando as his teammate Anderson watches on. The laps are running down, Schiap is ever closer to becoming the first ever French world champion and a Chinese team is close to getting a first ever world title in any motorsport. The second China CTIC driver, Zhang Ziwei, passes Marcelek at the back with just one lap to go. But the China team is too nervous to celebrate, praying Xiap's boat holds out. The final stretch, Xiap with an unassailable six second lead. He comes around the final turn of the race and takes the finish line. Philip Xiap is the 2014 world champion. Carella fought hard all race long, but this time he would have to make do with second best. You have to develop this sport by doing what you did today. Carella experiences the bitter taste of defeat on the pontoon, thinking perhaps of what might have been thinking perhaps about just how costly that error in Doha proved to be. But Corella, Torrente and indeed the entire field were simply outgunned by the China CTIC team. Great result for Force in sixth, Benevente, Zhang, Marcelek and Stark complete the top ten. <laughs> Qatar team can take comfort in winning the team championship for 2014 ahead of China CTIC, with Matt Krakbaba finishing third. It was hard. I really did everything I could uh, physically and with my boat for trying to stay close to, to Philippe, but it was not enough. It was really fine. Uh, just a perfect setup that uh, was just impossible to catch him. Uh, well, for me, I was just hoping to get a shot at him at some point, and I, unfortunately I didn't, but you know what, I had a had a really great race. I was really happy with my drive. Um, I passed a bunch of boats and, and, and stayed upright and, and, and really had a lot of fun. And, and, and like I said, I felt good about my drive. I, I got as much as I could considering where I was starting. So next year, that's all we can say is next year. The overall results for 2014, Shep world champion with 70 points, Corella world runner up on 62 points with Torrente third on 56. moment uh, it's a dream for me and uh, I'm very happy I make a good start and uh, I'm faster and uh, for me it's very difficult to say to explain what I feel now so. I waiting this moment for long I'm working you know together in the championship I follow I think I follow in uh, 60 races and then finally we get it so I really really <laughs> Oh, 
very happy. I hope that uh, in the future, another my driver can go to the podium also. This is Sharjah's 15th year hosting the F1H20 World Championship as the Emirate put on a fabulous gala dinner and celebration for this momentous event, honoring past champions of the Sharjah Grand Prix and ending with a fantastic water show and entertainment topped off with a spectacular fireworks display. That brings to a close a fantastic 2014 season. See you next year for the 2015 UIM F1H2O World Championship.